My name is Keith Bunn. I'm the pastor at New Life Christian Fellowship in Thunder Bay. Thanks for joining with us, and I pray that this would be a time of encouragement as well as challenge. We're looking at seeds today. Of all things, um, with the winter so close around us and uh, the temperature below zero, seeds are yet a very important part of our lives. In Matthew chapter 13, we read a large crowd that gathered around him, Jesus. And so he got into a boat. He sat there and taught as people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them up. Then other seeds fell in shallow soil with underlying rock, and the seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. And other seeds fell among the thorns and grew up and were choked out the tender plants, and still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was thirty, sixty, even a hundred times as much as what had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now, many people think of seeds and wonder, what is it all about? They're powerful, they're amazing, because they start off so small and yet become so big. Take a look at some seeds now, or some of them we call nuts. Here are the nuts, or they can actually also be seeds. Nuts that we're quite common with, such as the walnut, there's the hazelnut, there's the almond, the Brazil nut, and the pecan, all planted in the right way, in the right conditions, go up to bear this as fruit. Jesus also mentioned the mustard seed. Look at the difference in size. In fact, in here, they range in size, some as quarter the size of some of the big ones. And Jesus commented on the mustard seed being so small, yet can produce such a large plant. Now, it's not the smallest seed known to man, of course not. But it was the smallest seed known to the farmers and the people in the area. The question remains, when Jesus was talking about the seeds being scattered, what were the seeds? They were probably not the nuts that you saw there. Maybe there were some almonds being planted, but more than likely, something like the mustard seed. And they were scattered here and there. Oftentimes we think of seed as being the word of God. The Gideons have got that wonderful image of them scattering the word of God over the world. I love it. They're powerful. It's in a great work that they do. But I think there's another way to look at seeds. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, the writer says, The seeds of good deeds become a tree of life, and a wise person wins friends. You know, when you actively do a good deed, you plant a seed. You do something to a person, you um, refresh them, encourage them. The writer of Proverbs says, you plant and you, it becomes a tree of life. You're giving life, encouragement, and, and a blessing to someone. Let's be reminded of that. We think of the random acts of kindness, good deeds just done out of, out of kindness, out of our own heart. They bear fruit. Hosea writes in chapter 10, verse 12, he says, I plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground around your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord that he may become, may come and shower righteousness upon you. Hosea is telling us 
to plant seeds of righteousness. How do you do that? How do you plant righteousness? You walk in a right way. You do right things. You choose morality above expediency. You choose to do the right thing. And when you do the right thing and, and offer up that to the Lord, you harvest love. You bless people with your love. Hosea knows us well. He reminds us to plow up the hard ground around our hearts. Um, we need to be reminded to keep plowing. Our hearts can become hard in a moment. You know, the writer of Proverbs also tells us if you plant dissension and seeds of strife through gossip, you harvest strife. I don't want strife in our lives. I want to plant good seeds. Zechariah in chapter 8 verse 12 tells us, planting seeds of peace and prosperity among you. The grapevines will be heavy with fruit and the earth will produce its crops. The heavens will release its dew. And once again, I will cause the remnant in Judah and Israel to inherit these blessings. God is saying, I want to plant seeds of righteousness and prosperity, and they produce abundant fruit. God wants to plant those things in our lives. Let's be reminded. That's a great blessing to those around us. In James chapter 3, verse 18, James says, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. There's something that goes on when we plant peace. Those seeds of peace. When we choose peace over strife. Choose peace over our way. When you are a peacemaker. Jesus says in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the peacemakers. People that walk in righteousness do the right thing. They automatically bless others. And as Jesus says in the Beatitudes, Those that... Those that plant in peace will inherit the kingdom of God. So where to plant seeds? The challenge we have is that we become mm, conditional. We look at our harvest, we look at the field and, and we see a path, so well, I'm not going to spread any seed there. And, and we look at, well, there's some rocks there, so I'm not going to put any seed there. And we look at other areas and we, 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 we become judgmental in where we put the seed. A farmer went out to plant some seeds. He scattered them across his field. I don't know how it will bear fruit. It may bear fruit beside the path. It may bear fruit beside the rocks. It may bear fruit beside the weeds. Don't become judgmental in how you scatter your seed. Just scatter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that man shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. God didn't just love those that he thought were okay, looked okay, didn't have a hard path, weren't full of rocks or weeds. God just loved that's a challenge, isn't it? We all want to grow big and strong. We, we want to be like a redwood tree in the pictures, these amazing trees. And I've heard people say, I want to be a spiritual redwood. Do you understand that a, a redwood tree may have seeds, but they are not fertile until they're 200 years old? In fact, even there, the Department of Natural Resources in the States tells us that a redwood tree of the, those that are fertile seeds, of the seeds that are dropped from a 200-year-old tree, only 10%, 15%, 10 to 15% are fertile. So even there, as, the, as, as this a whole idea of seeds being scattered, only a few really bear fruit. 
I need to love. I need to give love, right acts and good deeds to all around me. I believe we as a people can transform our land and transform our attitudes by doing the right thing. By being a farmer that just scatters his seeds of love. That's God's example to us. Don't become conditional in your love or conditional in your good deeds. Give them out. God will return. God will give back to you more. You know, if you plant a few seeds, you'll only receive a small crop. Scripture tells me that, that, that those that plant a little will harvest a little. I want to plant a lot. Please join with me in planting a whole lot of good seed out there. And I know you'll be blessed and encouraged. Thanks for this time. And enjoy the day that God has given to you.